force and motion. Imagine you're playing in a playground. Think of all the things around you that can move. The seesaw goes up and down. The swings go back and forth. The merry-go-round goes around in a circle. There are so many ways in which things move. Everything we just described is a type of motion. Motion is movement from one place to another. When the seesaw is still and you and a friend sit on it, it begins to have motion. One seat goes up while the other goes down. They change their positions. Position is the place where you are. If you change your position, you are moving. There are different types of motion. If you swing on the swings, that's a back and forth motion. It's also an up and down motion. If you ride on a merry-go-round, you'll be going round and round in a circle. If you run forward with a back and forth motion to dodge a friend while playing tag, that's a zigzag motion. Or you can run in a straight motion to the base. There are also different speeds of motion. Speed is how fast you move. What speed do you go at when you're on the swings? It can be fast and exciting, or slow and relaxing. On a merry-go-round, you can start off slow and go faster and faster. You may run fast when you pass your friend playing tag, and slow down when you get to base. Many things are in motion around us, but some things are standing still. How do we get them in motion? What makes something move? Think about a toy car or truck. Pretend it's sitting on the floor in front of you. How could you get it to move? You might use your hand or foot to push it away or pull it toward you. You might hit it with another object, for example, a ball. You could even blow on it. There are many ways to get things to move. The push or pull that we use to make things move is called a force. A force is needed to make anything move. Let's look at things a person pushes and pulls in one morning. This man pushes an alarm clock to make it stop ringing when he wakes up. He pulls the blankets off himself and uses his legs to push his body up. He pulls open a cabinet to get out his breakfast. He pulls out a bowl and a spoon. He pulls the chair back to sit down and pulls it back in under the table. His teeth push and pull the food. When he's done eating, he pulls up all the food items on the table and pushes them back in the cabinet or fridge. He pushes a washcloth across the dishes to clean them. That's a lot of pushes and pulls. Now, let's use another example of motion. Riding a bike. You use force to get a bike to move. How? By pushing and pulling the pedals. Once the bike is moving, what else can you do? You can go faster by using more force, pushing and pulling harder. You can slow down by using less force, not pushing and pulling as hard. 
You can change which way you're going by using force, by pulling the handlebar, which pulls the wheels in another direction. What can you do to stop? Well, you can do two things. You can use force to stop by putting on the brakes. Or you can just stop pedaling and you will stop moving after a while. That's because there's another force acting on your bike's wheels. It's called friction. It means the wheels are rubbing against the road and that rubbing will eventually slow them down to a stop. But if there were no friction and no other force stopping it, your bike would just keep rolling on forever. Now let's summarize what we have learned.